Hello, everyone. My name is Michelle Ledoux, and I am the Director of Hospitality and Restaurant Management at the Institute of Culinary Education. Welcome to this installment of our guest lecture series. As a reminder, this, this demonstration is being broadcast, so if you are watching online, please post questions to the YouTube chat. And for our students and staff here today, please wait for us to pass around the microphone so we can all hear your questions. Our goal in these series of demos and lectures is to highlight the culinary excellence of contemporary chefs and culinary entrepreneurs. In the last few months, we have hosted Chef Michael Sinariski of Michelin Star Providence, Chef Diana Briscoe of Gracias Madre, Chef Stephanie Izard of Girl and the Goat, and Chef Nancy Silverton of the Michelin Star Osteria Moza. Our guest today, Chef Megan Meg Bickford, has called the Commander's Palace for um, Commander's Palace, her culinary home since 2008, and took the role of executive chef at the New Orleanians destination for leading edge cook Creole cuisine in October of 2020. Chef Bickford previously served as executive chef at Cafe Adelaide, the Commander's family's playful modern Creole restaurant. In her time at the helm of Cafe Adelaide, Meg was chosen as one of the FSR magazine's rising stars and one of Louisiana's cooking chefs to watch. Please join me in welcoming Chef Meg Bickford. And I'll let you introduce. Of course. How's everybody doing today? Thank you all for being here. We're very excited to be here. Uh, this is Nat Carrier. He's the chef de cuisine at Commander's Palace. Um, and we're going to make barbecue shrimp for y'all today. Raise your hand if you've ever had barbecue shrimp. All right. Okay, that's awesome. Raise your hand if you've ever cooked barbecue shrimp. That's even better. You know what? A funny thing about barbecue shrimp is that it's not barbecue <laughs> at all. Uh, but we're going to do that today. So um, Nat's going to start uh, getting our sauce together. Um, this sauce is a uh, made a lot of different ways, but for us, it is Worcestershire and hot sauce. Tons of lemon, tons of garlic, big, big, strong, bold flavors. Um, and that's what New Orleans is all about. You know, um, we, as you guys saw in the trailer for the movie, um, Commanders has been around for a very long time. Um, and one thing about Commanders is the goal is to always be pushing ourselves and our food forward and being on the leading edge of what's going on in our city, in our cuisine, and our part of the world. And so a uh, dish like this is, is incredibly classic, originated in New Orleans, um, but it is when you should be able to close your eyes and take one bite and know exactly where you are because that big, big, bold flavor. Uh, so what Nat is doing, he is getting lots of garlic toasted in a little bit of oil. Um, we want to caramelize the garlic lightly, but get it nice and golden brown, okay? Uh, it's really going to bring out all of the flavor in the garlic and help it get a little sweeter, a little bitter, right? And we're, we're looking for that. Again, we're going for really big, bold flavors. Um, so he's cleaning some lemon bodies now. Once this garlic gets a little toasty, hot with that lemon juice. Now I'm going to do the lemon bodies with uh, this and peel remove. You really want to get all that big flavor out of this. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm, of course, trying to remove any seeds I see. I'm also just kind of leaving all that flavor in. What Chef was saying is, is like, think about instead of just doing lemon juice into a sauce, we're actually going to caramelize the lemon. We're building all that flavor up. We're going bold. We're almost pushing the limits of where you can go, where it's not necessarily in any way too caramelized and bitter, but almost think about pushing that agenda. So the lemons are in. I'm gonna grab some rosemary. And this is our classic beginning here. We have garlic, we have whole lemon. Again, with pith and peel removed, very important. And we're adding to that chopped rosemary. And that's all gonna to caramelize together. Think about that big, bold, like smell, let alone flavor, because that's the beginning of the sauce. One thing that we really always think about is how important it is to go right from the beginning, very intentional. And also, I would just say like big picture on how we're developing a sauce. We're not trying to add in these flavors at the very end. We can do that with other items when we want to go a little bit lighter, a little bit say cleaner for the summer and the spring. But right now, we want to give you guys a real taste of New Orleans. Has anybody ever been to New Orleans? 
That's, okay. All right. Great. Awesome. So if y'all see, we're can you guys see the mirror? Yeah, it's here, right? Nope. Yeah. Well, whole point are. is we're not there yet. I've got light caramelization of the garlic. I've added the lemons. I'm gonna let that cook down, and then I'm gonna add the rosemary in about a minute. Check this bread in the oven. I'll be right back. Yes, sir. So to serve with our shrimp, we're just joining some peppers. I'm going to saute these down, uh, again, with lots of herbs. The sweetness from the peppers are really going to balance that sauce really well as we're going so big and bold with that sauce. Uh, just a great compliment to that. Anybody have any questions? Yes? Um, other than the bold flavors, um, how would you describe New Orleans cuisine to someone who's never had it? Great question. Um, New Orleans cuisine is is incredibly unique. Um, it it arguably is one of the um, first indigenous cuisines of the U.S. Uh, so the the influence of our cuisine comes from a lot of different cultures. As New Orleans is such a melting pot, or really South Louisiana is such a melting pot. Um, major influences of French and Spanish and Italian, Native American, African, Caribbean, um, which all of that put together in one pot is going to be an incredible thing. Uh, but what's really exciting is that that cuisine is ever evolving, right? And it, it hasn't stopped changing since, since the beginning. So now there's a lot of influence of Vietnamese, a lot of influence of Honduran. And it's, it's really awesome New Orleans is such a cool city that it just keeps doing this, you know, and like the more more um, cultural differences that are going on in the city, the more inclusive it becomes. Uh, and our umbrella, as we like to call it, just gets a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And there's a lot more for us to explore. Um, and the the fact that there are so many different influences in our cuisine, it just lends itself so well to pairing with so many other things, you know. Kind of around that idea, though, is. Something that I think we all get, especially you guys as students, is, is that think about there's all that history and all these new influences. But at the end of the day, when you're in a kitchen like a commander's palace, we're still going back to French techniques to drive for where everything's going to go. Even if we're really going outside of that original box, it's got to come from that structure, that history. And also just, again, like think about the idea. Here's a good example. We have a turtle soup on our menu. This is a veal stock. It's a 72-hour process to create this soup, and we cannot break that rule. So it's just the idea of well, no matter what we're doing, we got to remember that our weekly, our monthly, definitely at the beginning and end of our day, we have to have a plan to keep up with the demands of doing that in the kitchen. So this is right where we want it, guys. You can smell it. So like I'm, I'm getting all that great fond, and you, know, you think about fond in different ways. This is garlic, rosemary, and lemon fond. But I want to go ahead and scrape that so when I deglaze it, goes right into the sauce. That's what I would want would be for that to stay thick for the whole process and burn. That was a really great question. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Say it again. One part itself is the first place they gave it away on the side of the for me personally, uh, well, I was, um, I'm from the area. Um, my dad's from New Orleans. My mom is from Cutoff, which is a very small town uh, south of New Orleans on the bayou. Um, and so for me, I mean, growing up in, in a large South Louisiana family, uh, food was the center of our universe. You know, everything, that was everything. <laughs> it was everything we talked about. Everything we did uh, revolved around food. Everybody cooked, not professionally, but just everybody cooked. It was like a rite of passage, you know? Um, so the, the reason that I got into cooking was more about how the power of food, you know, and, and what that does for us and how we heal over it and how we celebrate over it. And um, we we're just always around that table. And I really understood the power of food and knew that I wanted to to be involved in that in a way. I wanted to, to provide food that that changed the way people thought and, and created experiences for them that I had growing up, uh, which were powerful. 
And, um, and we talk about that a lot at, so to answer your question, I don't think there was a dish. There was, there was a movement There was, you know, um, but we talk about a lot, the opportunity that we have, especially at Commanders, we're fortunate to be a very large restaurant. And so we have so many opportunities to influence people. And to have those aha moments with people or to create memories with people and really create an experience for them and how important that is for us and how seriously we take that, which is pretty cool. Chef, I'm about to add this cream. Do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, absolutely. So here we y'all can smell that, huh? It's like this big, bold reduction of flavor. It's it's like tantalizing, yeah. So we've got tons of garlic, we've got our rosemary. We've got our lemon juice and our reduction of Worcestershire and hot sauce. We're going to add a little heavy cream to this because it is, it's big, right? This needs some fat. It needs some rounding, right? So it's really going to coat our mouths well, but it's also not going to make it offensive. It's going to make it exciting. So it's it's all those bold flavors, but, but we're reining it back just a little bit with some fat. Ooh. You want to do those in here? A little, let me do shrimp in there. Yeah, sure. Push it. Yeah. over to you. Yep. So we're going to just cook these sweet peppers down in, I lost my phone. There we go. I'm going to have your onions right in the bind. So one of the reasons we wanted to do um, a dish like barbecued shrimp is because it's um, a great representation of our roots and our culture, but also just deeply satisfying. Like it's meant to be, as Chef said, big flavors, but also things that are really great to share with others. You know, this is meant to be a dish where you're going to you're gonna dig into it. You're going to get every little, that last little bit of sauce off the plate. And that's to us some of the craveability that dr drove us to not just become chefs, to love eating food and eating oral and cuisine. You? Awesome. Questions? Y'all are good at the question part. <laughs> Go ahead. So you guys cook with a lot of garlic. Do you know of any alternatives for people who have allergies? That is a great question. Uh, actually, <laughs> my pastry chef has an intolerance to garlic, and uh, it, it genuinely breaks my heart. I don't know that there could be a substitution for garlic. Um, but I think, you know, there's, we use a lot of, um, well, a lot of ginger and things that have that like strong spice, you know, that you can get that, that sweet and that heat and that the building of those flavors early on in the cooking process. Um, very different flavor, but I feel like that could possibly be a substitution. That's a good question. Now we're good at this part. Jeff, um, a lot of our students here are watching the demo about halfway through the program. Uh, they're starting to think about where they're going to go for externships, what kind of restaurants they want to start their careers off in. What advice would you give them at this point, starting to think about where they want to go, what they want to do, and what they should do to prepare for uh, staging and for interviews? Uh, great question. I think, um, I mean, it's an awesome opportunity to be at this point in your careers, right? Um, it's early on, you've got, you can get your foot in the door into a lot of places with the opportunity of an externship, right? Um, so be a sponge, think about who you wanna learn from. To me, it's so much of that is is philosophical, right? How, how are people leading their kitchens? Uh, what is their message? How are they trying to represent the community and what that means um, and what's important to you? Um, so really, you know, do do some digging and, and figure out who people really are and, and what their purpose is um, and not just necessarily about, I'm going to go in, I'm going to learn how to do this thing, you know, um, but be a sponge. Please be a sponge. And guys realize you can learn from anybody at any point. Everybody around you has something to bring to the table. Um, and the more you realize that and the more you kind of embrace that, I think taking those opportunities, especially like externships, um, and just get everything you possibly can get out of it. Great question. Thank you. 
I'm going to go ahead and see some shrimp. Awesome. Let's do it. I'm going to so cut some herbs. Yes. Very, like, they have very strong uh, traditions, right? So how do you differentiate yourself while staying in those traditions? I think that's a, a great question. Um, I think we we celebrate our past. We definitely don't feel reined in by it. Um, we, I don't know. New Orleans is an incredibly uh, traditional city in the sense that there is so much culture in that city. It is bubbling up from the streets, and it's it's just alive. And the the food scene and the music scene, art scene, it's just so well celebrated in that city um, that I think that that is, that is our respect to the tradition. Um, but we want to do new stuff and cool stuff. And we want to, you know, like it's, we don't feel like we are, are held by this tradition of the city at all, you know? Yes. Uh, this is a question for both uh, Chef Meg and the Chef de Cuisine. Yeah, Nat. Uh, Nat, um, what is your favorite dish to make? Whoa. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Give me five seconds. Okay, so favorite dish to make or favorite dish to make and eat your friends and family? Oh, okay. So for me, that's definitely in the world of taking the time to do any form of really Low and slow seared braised meat, where you really commit to it, especially at low temperature. Think of the idea of like, say, braising things like short ribs, the pork shanks for up to six, eight, 10, 12 hours, just as gentle as you can when you can give yourself the time to do it. And that's really both at home and at work. But obviously, for me, grilling Louisiana seafood and shellfish at home is where it's going to be happier. Think about, you know, oysters on the half shell, fresh redfish, um, nice, super garlicky marinated charred shrimp, you know, head on where you dig into it. And of course, eating crawfish with friends. Yeah. One paying attention there. Sorry. Um, yeah, to me, I think that's, I think I would have a different answer for that question every hour if you ask me on the hour, you know, um, it's kind of like, what's your favorite thing to eat? It's like, well, food is my favorite thing to eat. Um, but for me, it's, it's more of the experience of, of whatever it is that we're cooking. Um, so in South Louisiana, we love our seafood and we love our seafood boils and, you know, boiled Louisiana blue crab might be one of my favorite ingredients, my favorite things to eat. Um, but really it's the cooking of it that this, it's this whole process and it starts early and you've got to wait for the pot to boil and it takes so long and the crabs are alive when they go into the water and everybody sits around a big table and you clean the crabs and, you know, it's just, that is the whole experience to me. And so that's what I like to cook. I like to cook things that are whole experiences, you know. I got a question for both of you, actually. Um, first, for the executive chef, I want to see how long did it take you to be to become executive chef? Because many people have different years of like how to like some people are like two years or five years tops or even eight years. But my question is, how long did it take you to be? How long did it take you to go to come to bomb to be a chef? Uh, I started um, at Commanders in 2008. So I've been there almost 16 years now. Um, I started there out of culinary school. Um, working in kitchens is all I've ever done since I was 15 years old. Um, I was a baker and, and have done a lot of different things. And I started at Commanders and Really wanted to to travel and do more, but every every time I thought about doing that, the the next big step for me there at Commanders was like right around the corner, and it was in reach. Um, and so I was just constantly learning and growing, and I felt that for myself. And so I felt like I was getting everything that I needed right there. Um, so I've done a lot with the family. Um, I was the chef at Cafe Adelaide um, that in 2015, um, and so I was the first female executive chef for the for our restaurant group uh which was pretty awesome 
Um, but I had that opportunity at Commanders. I had I had held kind of every role that that you could hold outside of being the executive chef. It was the purchaser, it was AM sous chef, the PM sous chef, chef de garmage, the saucier, all those things. And um, you know, Corey, who was the chef before me, was there for about 23 years. <laughs> so it's not like the opportunity was was coming and going and I was getting passed for it. Um, but it's, you know, the the list uh, for as long as the restaurant has been around. Uh, that list is pretty short. So I'm very honored to be on that list. Um, but it was, you know, from 2008 to 2020, that's how long it took me. Um, but it's been an amazing journey and and got something out of every moment of it. Thank you. Chef the Cuisine. How yeah, did they take you to become Chef the Cuisine? Uh, I, I started cooking when I was actually um, in college for studying um, sociology. Uh, and I want to finish that degree. I did start cooking full time. I had some great mentors. So that's, that was in 2003. And I've had uh, multiple executive positions and just a cuisine, but never in a position of prominence like in the 2000s. I've been there for five years. Work for it. That's good. Yeah. Here I come. Sure. Hold. I'm really enjoying what I'm doing now. Um, you know, part of, of this place with the history and, and the goals that we have set for ourselves in, in these positions that he and I are in now um, are really exciting. So, so no, but you never know, you know. I, I mean, I hope so. The, the <laughs> um not to say that I want change, but I just think it really is. It's the world is our oyster. It's all what we make of it and want to do of it. And the, the journey is going to be exciting. It's been a wild ride already. Yeah, exactly right. Hi, Chef. Um, you said you've been at Commanders for 16 years. A lot of chefs we talk to that have come and done a presentation, they always tell us don't stay at a place too long. Like, you feel like you missed out on other opportunities, for example, by staying too long? Or and do you regret making that decision at any time in your career? Um, I don't regret it. No, um, I do. I mean, I obviously often think about that and, and talk about it because I think it's important. I have. I've been there for a very long time. Um, but like I was just saying, I feel that the next great opportunity was was there for me the whole time. And I just kept climbing this ladder and I kept being pushed professionally and personally. And I kept finding myself in great opportunities um, with people that I had learned to really trust and respect. And to me, that was incredibly important. Uh, so regret it? Absolutely not. Yes, I've been there for a long time. You know, so it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. And I think that that that's important for you all to think about what is important for you. Um, I think, like I said, right now is an awesome opportunity, especially with externships. Um, I had the opportunity to study abroad through externships and, and I did great things and learned a lot about myself and what was important to me. Um, but take the opportunity and go and, and do what you need to do and find the people that you do want to learn and grow from. Um, but when you find something that's special, don't leave just because you feel like you need to gather all of these experiences from different places. All right, uh, so my question was, you mentioned that the executive chef before you was there for, I think it was 23 years. Mm -hmm. Clearly, this environment is something that people are comfortable being in, and that's why they're not moving around so much. How would you describe how this uh, Commander's Palace is different from other places you've worked at? Oh, um, well... I think it's it's it again goes back to philosophy and and what's important. Um, as you saw in the trailer, I mean our our restaurant is that's that's what it's all about. It's how we make people feel. Um, every day we invite people into our homes and and we're honored that we get to serve them. I mean that's that's it. And and, and it's so incredibly important. And when everybody has that goal and that is the focus for all of us really beautiful things do happen. And, you know, it's it's a challenging job. Don't get me wrong. We've got seven dining rooms. We serve a lot of folks in there. Um, so it's, it is, it's grueling and it's challenging and the days are long. Um, but 
but magic happens in those walls. You know, it's it's really it's incredible. And uh, when the main goal is is that is to take care of folks, pretty rewarding. So there we go. Yeah, come on in. Is that all you're cooking? I've got from the oven. Awesome. Well, let's see. I like the butter sauce. Cool. I do want to show you guys. We made a much bigger batch of this sauce, but this was reduced by four. It was all those aromatics, a full like from 125%. Now we're going to finish it by mounting butter in. Hopefully five minutes away from plating. Bread's out. Bread's in the bottom oven at 250, it's cracked. We can. We're gonna plate over there. Plate over there. I think you can get something else. Right. You plate one with the but I think it's plate. Over there. Glad you're all having fun. If you're not asking a question, please keep the conversation to a minimum so everybody can hear what they have to say. Yeah. Okay, we'll toss it all together, and then right over uh, bread. Uh, chef, just curious, are you gonna put the shrimp in the sauce? Or... We're going to toss the shrimp with the sauce. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm allergic. So I just, I wanted to try the sauce. So it's okay. You're allergic to it's shrimp? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'd love yeah. for you to You're... try the sauce before we do that. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to grab a piece of bread. Okay. We'll get this covered. And again, this is a great sauce to eat, of course, with shrimp, but, you know, with, say, mushrooms or any kind of grilled pork. Nice. Right there. Yep. Chess, I have a question whenever you have a moment. Um, I don't want to. All right. Sure, I've got three minutes in. Fantastic. You guys are, I'm sure, familiar with mounting butter in. Um, we concentrated all these flavors, and we're just carefully. I have this flame off. I'll put it back on a whisper. And I'm going to add my butter, of course, just one nice knob at a time. That's going to ensure this off. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So I've got them in my hand, right? I've cubed them into about like half a tablespoon, tablespoon pieces, and I'm basically going to incorporate before I keep adding. Look. So it's not super small, but it's thin enough where it's going to break down fast. But again, at the same time, it's not like sometimes um, we'll always do like a super fine dice on for blancs. I've done that for many years. But if I'm doing a big batch like this, the biggest thing for me is, is that I can incorporate it like um, homogenous between additions. Chef, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, so you spoke a little bit about how Commander's Palace is really influenced by the Southern traditions that like ground the food and what it is. How do you think Southern cuisine is kind of seen in the broader culinary landscape in the United States? And what is your take on that? And what would you hope the future for Southern cuisine to be? I think um, understanding the complexity of what it really is. You know, like we talked about the the different influences, the different cultures that have influenced our cuisine and how that is constantly changing and evolving. Um, to us, it's exciting that, that something that, you know, New Orleans celebrated it's 300 years a few years ago. It's, you know, it's an old city for the U.S. And commanders celebrated their 130th <laughs> anniversary. It's like we've we've been around together for a long time. Um, and, and it is. I think it's underestimated the complexity of what the cuisine really is and where we're taking it and where the influences are allowing it to go. Um, there's a lot of really awesome stuff happening in New Orleans. There's incredible chefs that are pus pushing boundaries um, and, and I think we're, I don't think it's not being noticed. You know, I don't, I don't feel like we, why aren't we getting the, uh, <laughs> the attention that we should, because I think we are. New Orleans is such a celebratory city. I think people get it and they get why we do what we do. 
um, I guess that's my, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And you're a hundred percent correct. That is absolutely the truth. <laughs> You could not be more wrong about that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So yes. you both have a lot of experience now. Do you feel like you guys still have weaknesses or do you feel like you're past that point in your career? A hundred percent have weaknesses. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and that that's something that I excites me about our industry as a whole is that we we will never know it all. We will never, we will never reach the point where we're like, check that off the list. I'm good. You know, like there's so much, there's so much in the way that you interpret something and the way that I interpret something are always going to be different in some way. And so there's so much we can learn from each other constantly. There's so much to research. There's so much we don't know. And, and there's so much creativity to still be had. Um, so yes, there are plenty of things that I need to work on myself and it's exciting to always have have that it's always it's exciting to always have something to work for and to to focus on and to challenge myself with and I don't if there's anybody in this room that doesn't feel that way like you've got to find it you've got to find that exciting challenge for yourself so absolutely and that won't ever stop <laughs> so to take you back on her question what would you say is your way to keep like refreshing yourself and learning new new things so that you can stay on your toes as an executive chef? Um, I think your personal education has to be incredibly important to you, um, and you have to be self motivated. Um, so that's that's huge, right? And you've got to you've got to want it, and you've got to do the work. Um, I I think. Our team is, is I'm one of the luckiest ladies in the world because of the team that we have at Commanders and the collaborative environment that we've created. Um, it's not about me, it's about us, it's about what we're doing and, and how we're providing guests and how we're also getting what we want out of it, right? Um, what we want to serve and how we want to challenge ourselves and, and how creative we can be um, that we're still providing exactly what people want from us. Um, so the collaborativeness of the team and the food conversations that we sit down and have and our entire group. And it's, what do you want to bring to the table? And what is the future of commanders? And we are building that. It's not me. Um, and I mean, it, up to the owners, you know, T. Martin is, she she will put staples in our feet to keep us in one place long enough to say, we're having a food meeting today. And we talk about food. And she is just as invested in what's on the menu than I am. And she doesn't cook. You know, I mean, she can, but that's not, that's not her, her focus, but it is her focus because she understands how important it is. If yeah. that made sense. I would say my yeah. last question, I'm sorry. My last question is, who is your influence as a chef? Who do you look up to? Oh man, uh, there's, like I said, there's, you want this here? Yeah, sure. Um, so many talented people in the city of New Orleans, let alone all over. Um, I think, you know, we talk about it a lot and it's paying attention to what's going on outside of our world uh, is very important. Um, but but all of it, what people are doing, you know, I don't know. I don't want to give you any. <laughs> you guys hungry? Yes. Chef, you mentioned that you have seven dining rooms. That must be a... Big challenge. How many seats do you have, and how do you handle the business side of running a restaurant that caliber? Um, I don't know that there's an answer to how many seats if we have, and if there is, then we don't say it. Um, but uh, we, uh, you know, we configure the dining room so many different ways on any given day. Um, so I don't. I, there's there's no one answer to that. Um, but it's it's a large place. Um, you know, on a between us on a, you know, rock and service, we can, we can do a few hundred people. Um, and, and we do that often. Um, so the challenge of that is there's so many opportunities there. And, and that is the challenge is taking full advantage of all of those opportunities and not looking at it as a large restaurant with seven dining rooms and 
how many guests we're going to serve for that shift. It's how do we make this plate that important, right? How do we put that much focus on this plate? Um, and in doing high volume and keeping that the focus is really challenging, but that's that's what it's all about. It's not about how many people we can do. It's about you and if you enjoyed it. And how did that make you feel? And is it how we wanted it to make you feel? And do we create a memory for you? You know, Watch the plate. And the business side is the business side. I mean, that's um, something we should talk about. That's important. <laughs> Y'all pay attention to numbers, whether you like numbers or not. Just embrace them, understand that they have to be your friend. Uh, you look at them long enough, eventually they're, they'll start telling you a lot of things and they'll start talking to you. Um, being, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, well, it's real, you know, and, and doing, um, doing the fun stuff, you know, cooking um, is, is the fun stuff, but work's not always that fun, you know, and, and it, it's just really important that you don't shy away from it if it's intimidating or whatever the case may be. Um, understanding the business the best that you can is, is probably the best advice that I can give you today. Embrace it. Well, the place like Commanders where it has a lot of tradition, it's been uh, stable in New Orleans for yeah, how many years now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm go back to the city. It's awesome. Uh, how do you guys ever uh, change the menu, and how do you go about that? And as an executive chef, you, don't you get a, so an input on it. Time and just place it yeah, yeah. Really. So take full advantage of that. Um, the uh, it's easy. We go sit at the computer, and we type up the menu, and we press print. We go down to the kitchen, and we make some food. I mean, we really are given that much control. And I say we because back to our team being very collaborative. Um, one of my sous chefs call, calls me up and says, hey, I really want to do this this week. And I'm like, that sounds great. Let's do that. And that's that's it. It's that easy. Um, and it's it's not always that easy. But when you work for people like you saw in the trailer, when you work for people like that, um, they give you the freedom to, to do that stuff because that's what motivates you to do more of it and more of it and more. You know, if, if you have the freedom, it's pretty incredible. We're very lucky in this. So it's not a set menu per se that you got to follow it. What do you mean by that? So like uh, you guys don't have a menu that you've been using since you've been open. It just keeps changing. It keeps changing. Yes. And I'll say, you know, the turtle soup has been on the menu forever, you know, um, and that turtle soup has to taste exactly the same way that it did 100 years ago, you know? So there, there are those items, um, but I'd say there might be three of those items. Say the bread pudding souffle, I would say the turtle soup, and the shrimp and tasso hennequin. I think I wouldn't touch those three. Anything else? Yeah? Sorry? <laughs> Not on the menu. Maybe next week. Sorry. Um, I was I was actually gonna ask that earlier. I totally forgot. Um, since you got an award for the turtle soup, I was gonna ask like if you could talk about it or like what's how do you talk about it? Like you, talk about it. What is it? Yeah. Like what is, <laughs> how do you get that award? Yeah. Sure. Me. Um, that's what we should have done today. That would have been interesting. Um, so turtle soup is uh. Very, sorry, very classic for South Louisiana. Uh, there's a few other places in the country that, that you'll find it, but not very many. Um, we use alligator snapping turtles, which are massive, gnarly animals. Um, we, we do uh, more turtle meat than veal, but we do supplement with veal, veal meat. Um, and it just, turtle meat is strong and it's, it's wild and it's gamey and it's delicious, but it's a lot. So that the richness and, and great flavor of the veal, can y'all hear me? The richness and the great flavor of the veal, um, really helps to complement that turtle. Um, so there's, I think 19 ingredients, star soup, tons of garlic, obviously Trinity, onion, celery, and bell pepper. Um, then sure. we've got fresh sure. thyme and veal stock. Our veal meat, our turtle, some turtle meat, um, veal stock, some tomato product, all finished with.
finished with pressed pressed eggs, spinach, and sherry. Um, but it it's it's so much fun to eat. There's it hits on every part of the palate. Um, it's acidic and it's bright. There we go. <laughs> uh, it's acidic and it's bright, uh, but it's incredibly rich. Um, it it takes including the stock, it takes about four days to eat. I mean, we, we run our veal stocks for three days and then we reduce our veal st stock almost to demi before we're making our turtle soup. Gotcha. Oh, for those that might be visiting soon, where would you recommend them to go outside of Commander's Palace? Like where to eat? Where to eat, oh, to do, have fun. Oh. All the places to go to, not just food. Where, what do you like to do? Well, I hope if you are going soon, uh, we we are in fest season. And there is a festival probably every like, week we'll for the next the like stuff. four months straight. Um, yes, absolutely. So uh, French Porter Fest is coming up. Jazz Fest is coming up. Um, but it's also, uh, let's see, what is coming up? Uh, well, it's crawfish season. We've had a challenging crawfish season. That's a bit of a sensitive subject. We've had such bad drought uh, this past year um, that crawfish are, are hard to come by, but they're they're here. Um, but crawfish, um, oyster fest is coming up. Um, there's just a lot going on. But that's the great thing about New Orleans is that there is always stuff going on. Okay. Um, but tons of restaurants. I mean, it's it's hard to find a place that you shouldn't go. To be honest with you, like it, it's yeah. <laughs> There's a camera over oh, there. <laughs> a good question. Any other questions? That's the. At least they're trying to open them. <laughs> the Trinity was onion, celery, and bell pepper. Is that we do um, the same except for bell pepper? We do carrots. Mm -hmm. So is that? Like for Creole food or Cajun food? That's exactly right. So a mirepoix, onion, celery, and carrots, classic French technique, right? Oh, uh, yeah, the right For here. us in South Louisiana, uh, when the French came to Louisiana and settled in Louisiana, uh, peppers grew so well, right? So we we have a very it's tropical things, climate. Yeah. Um, so peppers grow very well in tropical climate. Yeah, we carrots do, but it wasn't. Like, easy for them to yeah. grow as it was peppers. So, oh, so the mirepoix just transitioned into the they Trinity have. and it became onion, celery, bell pepper. And it is so much the base of so many classic New Orleans food, but, but not just classic. I mean, we don't know how to cook without it. You know, garlic is the holy yeah. Trinity. <laughs> it's the Pope. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Came out great. Want to try one? Yeah. Uh, well, a long time ago, uh, we used to butcher the turtles in house. We don't anymore um, because they are incredibly hard to clean. Um, I mean, they they are a fierce reptile. Um, I've had the pleasure of doing it before, and I'm okay with not doing it. <laughs> it's it's a very labor intensive. It's a messy dish. It's going to happen either way. So imagine party uh, plate piece for parties with like one more components. This is the mess. All right, what do you? You have two. Well, the only really <laughs> right thing to do that is to just really take your time. You got to remind people like, it's, it's hard. But, but it's also like so you're just going to spend five times more time cleaning this up. Mm -hmm. That's a good. That's a good thing. Two more. Yes, ma'am. I put dirty pants over there. It's the stacking. Awesome. I'm glad you <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Question. They work every day just like we do. Um, which is really incredible. You know, um, we actually, it's called BOD, is a Brennan on duty. 
Um, and that's, there's a BOD schedule and there, there is. There's um, fabulous to work with and we're, we're lucky that they are there all, all the time. Yeah. Oh, that is Ralph's, yeah. So that's not our restaurant group. Um, but that is actually the brother of one of our co-proprietors. So Brennan family is very, very large. Um, and a long time ago, they split the restaurant group up into three different restaurant groups. So they kind of really branched out. So let's say like financially, you know, I mean, we, we are not completely different restaurant groups, uh, but still very much family, which is awesome. You always have friends, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I'm hearing good sounds. <laughs> well, thank you, chefs. We really appreciate your hospitality and your fabulous food. Thank so. you very much. It was our, our absolute pleasure. It was wonderful speaking with y'all. Great questions. Thank y'all. Come see us. Yeah. I'll be there next Thank week. You. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Everybody give a big round of applause if you're not actively using. Thank you so very much, chefs. That was wonderful. This food smells incredible. Um, if you are in class right now, please, please go ahead and head back to class now so you can get started on everything. Thank you. Eat your shrimp <laughs> and get to class. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure.